Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Coach Andres, and ladies, thank you for tuning in. We're going to finish part one of part two. Does that make sense? No. Ladies, we're going to finish part two of part one, Mistakes of Finding Mr. Right. If you didn't catch that first video, go ahead and check it out. We got three tools, not rules, that we went over, and today we're going to go over three other tools, not rules, to help you find Mr. Right. But... There are mistakes that you're making, that, but <laughs> there are mistakes that you're making that you might not be aware of. And I only say this from experience because I was looking for Mrs. Wright, but I was making my own mistakes. So anything I do coach, anything I do preach, anything I do talk about is because I've been helped. I've been redirected. I've been coached. I've been blessed to wake up. You know, and that's why I make sure I show some gratitude towards this. And I'm always going to be very compassionate to your situation, always sensitive to your position in life and maybe, you know, loneliness. But I'm not going to be easy on it. Why would I be easy on that? No. Tough love. Let's do it. We can do it. You're more than a girlfriend. You're stronger than that. Let's find out. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to have some fun doing that, though. So that's how I always roll. My clients, ask them, they say it firsthand, love coaching you, love getting coached by you because you shake me up, but you do it with fun and class and you do it with respect and you don't play games, you don't play manipulation, you don't set me up for some false, immature, insecure level of dating. And I'm like, no, that sounds stupid. <laughs> not, my, not, my, not my way of uh, coaching, you know, we're not here to peacock. Anyway, so number one. Mistakes you're doing in finding Mr. Right. We call this the leftovers. You're the leftovers. You found someone great. Love that. The attraction, the connection, everything's great. So that's a good start. It's awesome. It's going awesome. But he's not prioritizing you. He's not. And that could be for a number of reasons. He's very busy at work, which is probably the most reasonable one. He's got a lot of family obligations, which is another reasonable one. He's got kids, which is also a very understandable one. You know, I have a lot of clients in those situations, single moms, dating single dads, all the way. But if the communication's not prioritized and the time isn't prioritized, then you're leftovers. You're always going to be seemed and felt like leftovers. So if it's something, again, understandable with kids or family or taking care of an elderly person like a mom or a retired grandma, which is all high character qualities, if he's not communicating and prioritizing you, he's not physically going to prioritize you. So you need to be felt like a priority no matter what it is. I always say quality of time compared to quantity. But so if he's just kind of keeping you along and leaving you out there to figure it all out without him inputting his story, telling you reasons why he's so busy, saying he's got to take care of grandma, saying he's got to work 80 hour weeks. If he's not prioritizing you, not just physically, but through communication, verbally, you feel like leftovers. And that means he doesn't really value the relationship as much as you do. Doesn't value you as much as you think he does. So don't be the leftovers. And I, again, I'm going to repeat this again. There are a lot of understandable reasons why he's that busy. But if he's not taking the time to value the communication, prioritize informing you on that and why he's not available, then he, that's a reflection on the relationship. All right. Number two. And this one is kind of funny. It's very common. And I have a lot of my clients who've gone through this. And it's interesting because it's not supposed to be mean, but it's got to be real. The nice guy. The nice guy, mistakes in finding Mr. Right, and you're dating the nice guy. Who doesn't like a nice guy? I think I'm a nice guy, but too nice? No. Too much of anything is disgusting. <laughs> it's, like, it's like if you like vanilla ice cream, and it's great, right? But if I hand you a big bucket of vanilla ice cream, and I say, now eat all this, what's going to happen? You're going to hate vanilla ice cream. So when you date just the nice guy where he adores everything about you, but you don't feel the same way, which is common, and I get it, nothing wrong with him, but if you're not feeling that spark, if you're forcing this connection, there isn't really much of an attraction. You kind of are settling. You feel like there are forms of compromising. You might make a mistake in finding the actual right guy for you. And again, I understand it comes from different places, different cultural backgrounds, different ethnics, uh, tradi ethnic traditions, different religious. I respect all of them. 
but you want that spark with someone. You do. So uh, there are reasons why you could settle with some and someone, and I'm not here to judge that, but I, I don't want you thinking, oh, how, how come I don't have that spark? Because I'm trying to tell you. You have to make sure you find that spark in someone. He can adore you and love you and do, do everything for you, which he sounds like awesome. Literally, he sounds awesome. But if you don't feel that way for him in any form, and it doesn't have to be just a sexual attraction or a physical attraction, but the heart, the soul, the character, the values, the morals, the standards, those things, if you're not attracted to that, you're dating the nice guy and you're going to resent it. You're going to take advantage of it. You're going to take it for granted. And I don't want you to do that. So I want you to find a way to test yourself, almost challenge yourself to make sure you don't settle for that. There are a lot of nice guys out there, which I think are great, but unless you find that connection with him, you're only fooling yourself. I want you to find Mr. Right, so you have to be Mrs. Right to yourself. And that's how you know what you're worth and your value. Don't settle. Number three, and the final one of part two, mistakes in finding Mr. Right. But before we go to number three, why don't you hit that subscription because I really appreciate your support as well as check out coachingwithundress.com if you're interested in any coaching sessions like I told you before and I'll tell you in your face. I'm here to shake it up, babe. I'm trying to like give you some tough love. I'm trying to let you know, listen, if you want love, it's not easy. What I coach is not easy. It's going to be hard, but we're going to do it together and we're going to have fun doing it because it's your plan, your goal, your life. We have to do this. Otherwise, who's going to do it for you? I want to help you. I want to make sure you get all the tools, not rules, to find the best man for you. Guidelines. Give you the best chances. That being said, number three actually is similar to number two, but different. Not the nice guy, but perfect. The perfect guy. I. He's got to be 6'2". He's got to make six figures. He's got to have 12 and a half pack abs. He needs to wear a size 13 shoe, drive three cars, and a beach house. Uh, yeah, boom. Oh my God, what, what are you doing? Trying to date perfection doesn't really, doesn't exist. It, those are all shallow, superficial things. If your perfection meter was based on character, morals, values, standards, goals, there's better chance of finding someone like that. You know what I'm saying? Because those things are replaceable, the materialistic things. I say better chances of maybe having a relationship, not better chances of finding that. It's actually more rare to find those kind of guys. But to have a relationship with someone with those qualities compared to Beach House and 12 and a half pack abs, don't ask me how, what's a 12 and a half pack ab anyways. But you're dating for perfection. Or you're dating for perfection and you're looking for problems. You're detecting, looking. What was that movie in uh, old school? Look at her, she's, ju she's judging, she's judging, she's judging. See, why would you want to get married? What was that, the Vince Vaughn scene? I love that movie. But yeah, you're always looking for a problem. You're always trying to test his perfection. Or you're self-sabotaging it by always thinking there's upgrades. You're, you're dating him, but you're always looking for upgrading. You're always on your DMs. You're always checking out Instagram. You're always looking at someone else's page. You're always trying to DM slip someone else. You're basically self-sabotaging yourself because you're looking for perfection. Whereas you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. So what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? No relationship is perfect. So don't set yourself up for failure. Be realistic about what's going on. Find those beautiful imperfections about the person of who they are and love them for who they are. But the qualities, the core, like I said, the values, morals, standards, and goals, shoot for those to be somewhat perfect. Not the other things, not the superficial, shallow things. All right? That being said, I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video. I'm always here to help, and I'm always very humbled and grateful for all your support. Thank you, and I'll see you all soon.